good morning, everybody. Really nice to be here with you today. It's a, a, a blessing and a pleasure for me to deliver God's gifts to his people through word and sacrament today. Um, we have one, one announcement for sure. Did you want to make that announcement now? So use up the opened ones before starting a new one. Yes. And Good. Like I said, the, the open ones are on the right side in the drawer. The right. Okay, the in the drawer. Are the ones that are Got it. Thank you. Um, a couple other things. We do have a morning Bible study tomorrow morning. I'll be leading. We're continuing through Luke, not Luke, Hebrews. And, um, and it'll be at 1030 tomorrow morning. So come join us for that. Uh, what else? We are in stage four now. We've been moved up. So thanks be to God for that. Uh, we have no more official restrictions in terms of our, our numbers, right? Am I saying that right? Um, just some recommendations. So continue to take the, the necessary measures to, st to stay safe. And at the same time, we're, we're thankful that things are moving in a good direction. Anything else that I'm forgetting? If not, we'll go ahead and begin with our first hymn. and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are sin nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. 
Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As the call and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, And for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, We worship you, we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. On us, you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Christ with the Holy Spirit, the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Since we cannot stand before you relying on anything we have done, help us trust in your abiding grace and live according to your word. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We're in the 16th Sunday after Pentecost now, and our Old Testament reading is found in Isaiah chapter 55. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord that he may have compassion on him and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Our epistle reading comes from St. Paul's letter to the Philippians, chapter 1. I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. 
so that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and to all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. For I know that through your prayers and the help of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, this will turn out for my deliverance, as it is my eager expectation and hope that I will not be at all ashamed, but that with full courage now as always, Christ will be honored in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. Yet which I shall choose, I cannot tell. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and to be with Christ, for that is far better. But to remain in the flesh is more necessary on your account. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith, so that in me you may have ample cause to glory in Christ Jesus because of my coming to you again. Only let your manner of life be worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent, I may hear of you that you are standing firm in one spirit, with one mind, striving side by side for the faith of the gospel, and not frightened in anything by your opponents. This is a clear sign to them of their destruction, but of your salvation, and that from God. For it has been granted to you that for the sake of Christ, you should not only believe in him, but also suffer for his sake, engaged in the same conflict that you saw I had, and now hear that I still have. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. Hallelujah, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, The kingdom of heaven is like a master of a house who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for a a denarius a day, he sent them into his vineyard, and going out about the third hour, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace and said to them, You go into the vineyard too, and whatever is right, I will give you. So they went. Going out again about the sixth hour and the ninth hour, he did the same. And about the eleventh hour, he went out and found others standing, and he said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? And they said to him, because nobody has hired us. He said to them, you go into the vineyard too. And when evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, call the laborers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last up to the first. And when those hired about the 11th hour came, each one of them received a denarius. Now, when those hired first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received a denarius. And on receiving it, they grumbled at the master of the house, saying, These last worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. And he replied to one of them, Friend, I'm doing you no wrong. Did you not agree with me for denarius? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last worker as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or do you begrudge my generosity? So the last will be first, and the first last. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard this word of our Lord, we confess our faith with millions of Christians all throughout the centuries in these same words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, 
by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and who's crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated.
In the name of Jesus, amen. When I was first learning Spanish back during my vicarage years in the Dominican Republic, I was hearing this Spanish phrase repeated over and over and over again, and I could not figure out what it was. It was this, no es justo, no es justo. Maybe you guys know what that means, no es justo. And finally, I learned what it meant. No es justo means that's not fair. And I heard it from adults and children alike, but what I was shocked by was that some of these small, small kids who barely knew how to form a full phrase in Spanish knew that phrase very, very naturally. And that's because we have this sense of what's fair, the sense of what's right and wrong built into our system, the law of God written on our hearts. And because we have a good sense of what's right and wrong, what's fair and unfair, the text from today, Matthew 20, gives us some problems because it just doesn't seem very fair. So it's a familiar story. A master hires his laborers to work out in his vineyard. And although they start some at the beginning of the day and work all day, some in the middle, some just work one hour, they all get paid the same. And we cry out, no es justo. That's not fair. And living in a country where this topic of income equality or inequality is a big debate, we are even more prone to question this master's actions. We sympathize with those first workers. They worked all day. They deserve more. And yet he pays them the same. We know situations of inequality and we want justice. We want fairness. However, this lesson today from our Lord is not a lesson on income equality or social justice. Scripture teaches about that in other spots. So for example, St. Paul in 1 Timothy 5, he says, a worker is worthy of his or her hire. Employers take note. And workers are to serve their employers mindful that their service is actually serving God himself. And really, this is just basic loving your neighbor as yourself. If you're an employer, well, you wouldn't want to get pay paid an unfair wage, so don't pay an unfair wage to your employees. If you're an employee, well, you wouldn't want someone working half-heartedly for you, so don't work half-heartedly for your employer. You're serving God in your vocation. But again, that's not the lesson that Jesus is getting at today for us. Rather, this is a lesson on God's kingdom and how things work in this very strange kingdom. And it's so different than the way the kingdom of our world works. And so he shows us, shows us something very strange that is breaking into this world little by little as God's kingdom breaks in little by little. And this is what it is. Love for the least. It gives the Father joy to give love to the least. And isn't that so contrary to how things work in our world by nature? The kingdom of this world says, no, 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 no. Love for the greatest. Love for the most impressive. Love for the beautiful. Love for the most intelligent. Love for the most confident. Love for the richest. Love for the powerful. In short, love for the most important. All the rest, well, they matter, but just not quite as much. That's the way that our world works. I have to say that one of my favorite parts of being a pastor is that people move past the superficialities a little quicker and open up to you. I love that. Most of the time we go along saying, oh yeah, everything's great, living the dream, but it's not true. And so I love how people come to me and more quickly open up about how things really are about real brokenness, real struggles, real sadness, real joys. Authenticity is refreshing. And I love that about being a pastor. And one of the things that I see a lot as a pastor is that there are many, many, many people out there, many of us, that struggle with feeling unimportant, insignificant, overlooked. I struggle with it too sometimes. In the way of this world, this never-ending rat race, as it's sometimes referred to, for significance, this constant competition to be someone, 
leaves so many people feeling disillusioned. And yet our Lord comes and he breaks that system down and he says, in my kingdom, the least are loved. And it gives me joy to love the least. But the strange thing about our, words, our Lord's words today is that this joy of his is hidden behind some harsh words. Did you hear the parable? He says to the first workers, the master in the parable, am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Are you unhappy, jealous because of my generosity? Who are you to accuse me, the master says. I've given you what I agreed to give you. Now take your money and go. When you have your own kingdom, you can run your kingdom the way you want. But it's my kingdom and I will govern it with generosity and grace. Love for the least. It's as if the master says, I would love for you to stick around too. But first, your heart will have to change. Because I am generous and merciful and that will never change, says the master. That's an accusation that stings. And it stings us too. Because as the world pushes you and pushes me to find significance in what we do, in what we accomplish, we tend to judge others by that same unhappy standard, don't we? We're reminded that our hearts also have to change if we are going to live in this new kingdom where the least are loved. So sometimes when we look at others and we think, well, who are they? What are they doing here? If that happens, we have not understood our Father's kingdom. When we leave here, the church where we receive God's mercy and grace over and over again, and then we walk out the threshold of the door into real society out there, and we see people on the street and we criticize them for a thousand and one things because they should be a little bit more like I am. We have not understood our Father's kingdom. Or if we tend to think that our churches here in Siouxland should really just be full of people that look like us and sound like us and think like us, Again, we have not understood our Father's kingdom. The Master, his words ring in our ears. Your hearts have to change too. My heart has to change too if we are going to be in this new kingdom that belongs to our God. And that accusation of the law, it always shows us our sin and the fragility of our love with a specific purpose. It drives us to repentance so that we can see Jesus and live in his kingdom as we should. It drives us to a knowledge of our sin so that we cling to Christ, the only solution for that sin. And in doing that, we participate in the joy, the joy that comes with participating in a kingdom where the least are loved. In this kingdom, Jesus did not come to call the righteous, but to sinners. He did not come for the healthy, but for the sick. In this kingdom, the first will be last, and the last first. In this kingdom, nobody earns their place as children. It comes to them freely, graciously, mercifully, surprisingly, as a pure gift. And this never-failing mercy of Jesus, it slowly begins to change our hearts, too. Being in this strange new kingdom where the least are loved has, a, it has an effect on us too. When we hear over and over again that we're saved by grace through his death and resurrection. In his kingdom, love will be poured out for the least. And that includes us. That love is for everybody. But sometimes we think, well, it can't be for me too. So I'm here to say it's for you too each one of you. Like the parable, some of us have been Christians, some of us have belonged to this new kingdom for many, many decades. We've borne the burden and the heat of the day, we've labored diligently with our lives, and diligent in good works, maybe left some things behind for the sake of Christ's kingdom. And for others of us, maybe we've been converted and brought into this kingdom very late in life, maybe at the last hour. Maybe a large part of your life has been following the vain dreams of the world, and in the very evening of life, you have heard and heeded the call of our Lord. But it doesn't matter. 
As far as our relationship to God is concerned, it doesn't matter one bit how late somebody shows up. They're on the same level. You are on the same level as all the rest. The one group, just like the other group, saved by grace through faith alone in Jesus Christ. Nothing more, nothing less. Saved and brought into this new kingdom, a strange kingdom indeed, where the least are loved. Now, this might just sound like wishful thinking, but it's not. This kingdom actually exists, and it's breaking in more and more and more as the time gets closer that our Lord will return. And so today, Jesus does more than just invite us to imagine the kingdom. He calls us to live in it, because this world, this kingdom does exist in him. In Jesus, God delights in giving to us what is not deserved. Salvation to sinners, the joys of heaven to those suffering the horrors of hell. We participate in this marvelous kingdom where the least are loved. And so Jesus gives us this parable today not to just sit and ponder, but he invites us to join his father's mission. Join him as sons and daughters in the expansion of this new kingdom where the least are loved. And it's not going to be easy. Jesus knows that working in this kingdom can be very difficult, even dangerous at times. And we can forget about the joy. And so he reminds us what kind of kingdom the kingdom of God is really like. It's like an orphan being welcomed home. A person dying of cancer being treated like a person loved and valued by God. Like an enemy receiving the welcome of a friend. And we could go on and on, but not just in words. We go on and on in deeds also. Words and deeds that remind us and teach us that the world, there's a new kingdom here, and it's breaking in. It's God's kingdom. It's God's kingdom. And in his kingdom, there's always, there's always, there's always love for the least. Amen. And now may that peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We continue now with the prayers of the church printed in your bulletins. In peace, let us pray to the Lord and offer to him the petitions and supplications of a people confident of his promise to hear and answer us with mercy. That we may seek the Lord while he may be found, call upon him in the day of salvation, and be prepared by his mercy for the day of judgment. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may delight in the light of Christ and in his salvation that sinners may, be, may find refuge in his mercy and comfort in his forgiveness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That we may hear the voice of God speaking in his word and nurtured by faith, faithful pastors who preach and teach this gospel. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That this word may be the foundation of the home that husband and wife may be united in this faith and hope, and that their children may hear and be nurtured in this word by faithful parents. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. That the Lord may bless missionaries far and near, that he may nurture newly planted congregations, and that he may renew those congregations in distress, that those from every nation and culture may be united with us in faith and life. Let us pray to the Lord. That the sick may be healed, the troubled may know peace, the grieving and comforted be comforted, and the dying be delivered to everlasting life in Christ. Especially we pray for Shelley, Rick and Lyle, Kim, Kim and Joanne, Justin, Phyllis, Susan, Sarah, Beth, Ken, Bob and Kimberly, Don, Pastor Jeff, Kathy and Howie, Mary, Joanne, Claren, Diane, Roxanne, and Karen. Doug and Penny, Pastor Henry, Diane and Matt, Josh and Bonnie,
Katrina and Pastor Sherry and Steve and Deanna, Gary and Sandy, Anne and Lori, Bob, Will, Carmen and Steve, Jeannie and Randy, Corby and Butch, Joel, Norman, Capistrana, Troy, Titus, Frank, and our shut-ins, Shirley, James, and Teresa, Bob and Jane, Lois, Marie, Florence, Doris, Dave, Don, Glenda, and Shirley. And that we may be delivered from fear, anxiety, and despair by God's gracious care. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord defend your church, especially Grace Lutheran and Wayne, Zion Lutheran and Presho, Bethlehem Lutheran and Rapid City, our Redeemer Lutheran and Rapid City, the entire LCMS District in New England, Concordia University Chicago for all their students and staff, Landmark Baptist Church here in Sioux City, and St. Paul United Methodist Church in South Sioux City. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may commune in faith, that no unrepentant sin may hinder our reception of Christ's body and blood, and that the fruits of this communion may be reflected in a manner of life in keeping with who we are as God's children by baptism and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Hear the prayers of your people, O Lord, and grant to us all good things and that are good and wholesome and keep from us all things harmful. Give us contentment that trusting in your mercy we may delight in your saving will where the last are made first by your generosity and grace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We rise as we pray that prayer which our Lord has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper. And when he had given things, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This too, as often as you drink of it, in remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. O Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, in giving us your body and blood to eat and to drink, you lead us to remember and confess your holy cross and passion your blessed death, your rest in the tomb, your resurrection from the dead, your ascension into heaven, and your coming for the final judgment. So remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, and mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away.
that made the Kabbalah the way to Jesus Christ. I mean, that's pretty simple. Pretty me. Kabbalah the way to Jesus Christ. And now may this true body and this true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and in soul for life everlasting. Depart in peace. Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. We close with our last hymn, Go, my children, with my blessing. forgiven at peace and pure here you learn how much I love you what I can cure here you heard my fears so sorry here you touched him so his glory go my children